public power now. Public power now. There is so much going on in secrecy in this town that the civil service people over at the legislative analyst office told us all of these bills and all of the governor's propositions have been going through in secret. If we had public power, the people would decide what kind of power we have in the future. We would be able to demand solar power, wind power, green renewable energy. There is no reason for us to put up with these generators gouging us. We could be taking over those plants. Yeah, take them over! Can you spell eminent domain? We would get our democracy back. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. I'm a ratepayer advocate, and what that means is that I get involved in reading through all these documents. I love detective stories, so I actually enjoy um, figuring out what the utilities did with the money and then talking about that. So, and that's one of the things I wanted to let you know. When we work with people to um, do community organizing, we want to make sure that you do something that you really love and do it with us. And that's one of the ways that we can grow. I've, you know, being an activist has done more than anything else to expand my social network and, and to um, expand my skills in all sorts of, all sorts of things. So um, it really can be a, a wonderful experience if you've never tried it. California is very committed to energy efficiency, so people are kind of like, yeah, this, 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 this is a good thing. This might be fun. The grid operator who's called the independent system operator. This is because the utilities used to be running their own grids, but then during deregulation, they put the California independent system operator together. Um, so you're called the ISO or the CAISO. And uh, that entity is a, you know, kind of a quasi public entity and they run, they manage the grid so that anybody can um, participate in, in uh, moving power around the grid. Uh, they have a lot of issues that I obviously have to be dealt with. The energy business is very complex, detailed. You have to have 24 hours of power or as much as you need. Um, for whatever people are doing, and then uh, you, there is electrical issues that have to be dealt with. So immediately to my left, I have Barbara George, founder and executive director of Women's Energy Matters. Here you go, and thank you so much for asking me to be on this panel. I just wanted to actually to start with a little background of where we're coming from and what stage we're at, because I. I think it's important to realize that we're part of a national movement to make uh, energy efficiency uh, and demand side resources um, to use them better. Number 736, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I would like to move adoption of ordinance number 736, an ordinance of the town of, of the town council of the town of Fairfax approving the Marine Green and Clean Energy Authority joint powers agreement and authorizing the implementation of the community choice aggregation program. Second. 
I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say that. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, the uh, motion has been made and seconded. Those in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, passes on five and nothing but three. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of No Valley approving the Red Energy Authority Joint Powers Agreement and authorizing the implementation of a community choice aggregation program. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? None. Carries unanimously. All right. Mark George, um, I am so thrilled to be here to honor you at the moment of this vote. This is really great. Last night we were at the Mill Valley Council meeting and about 11 o'clock they voted unanimously to support marine clean energy. Almost every city but one I understand that had one vote against it has endorsed it unanimously. This is incredibly exciting and heartening. I've been involved in energy since 1978. I've been, I started in the anti-nuclear movement way back then and do you know that there has only been one nuclear power plant in the country that was shut down by the vote of the people and um, cities and counties, nobody had ever had a chance to vote on anything that the utilities have been doing. Um, that's how rare this is to be able to vote to increase renewables and energy efficiency. We are supposed to be a democracy. I think we are actually seeing democracy function as it, as it needs to do. All in favor? All right. Aye. That carries unanimously. Rebecca, congratulations. <laughs> I, I didn't thank you before. I thank you with my whole heart. This is the chart, and we put this together uh, based on the information that we, um, uh, that the commission, the California Public Utilities Commission, um, presented to the procurement proceedings. So this, these are all the figures actually from the commission that say um, we're going to have this much power, this much energy savings and other types of programs, so, you know, renewable programs, everything is included here. But when you get down to the bottom line, we got 150% of the power that we need today and in 2020 they have 156% of the power. You need a little bit of a cushion, Seven to, right now the cushion is supposed to be 15%, so you basically have 50% cushion instead of a 15% cushion. And when I looked at this, I thought, well, heck, you could just take the nuclear power out of this and then you'd still have a huge excess of power in California. 40% essentially um, excess power today and 45% uh, and in 2020. Um, so we can move to a, clean, a cleaner energy system if we plug this stuff in. This is the, the tricky part is that the commission has not really made it possible to use that. And this is where I've been just in, in asking them to start tracking the energy efficiency and the rooftop solar. So basically, I have been proposing to the commission in these various proceedings, let's get people together who want to do these clean resources. Let's get them together with the utility, the commission, the, the grid operator, and figure out how to replace this nuke. And that would be totally fun. And it would be a, it would really make a difference all around the country because there's and not actually it will make a difference all the way around the world because Japan certainly needs to figure this out too and other places that are um, finally thinking about closing these nuclear power plants down so that is that's the work that I do and 
more and more support over the years, more and more people getting into uh, pieces of this of this game, and um, it's it's a wonderful day because the San Onofre power plant took itself offline, and so we have to do something about it, which is a, a wonderful place to be, and. Uh, and the commission is, you know, like gingerly taking steps in this direction. They are like, you know, they're, they don't want to piss off the utilities, but they are making, um, you know, the, the, the last couple of decisions that came out in the last few months have had little bits of the work that I do in them in the energy efficiency decision in November. Uh, there's a little section called Other Issues. And the other issue was San Onofre, <laughs> and so we need to put uh, energy efficiency. This is what the the commission actually told Edison, uh, and we need to put energy efficiency uh, into play in the areas that are served by San Onofre. They told Edison and San Diego they should deploy their energy efficiency that way. Well, this is the first time they've ever said that. This is the first time they've ever said that in a local area they can use energy efficiency to replace a nuclear power plant. 